What's up fam? Welcome back to the channel. So good to see you today. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, first of all, before I get into all this mumbo jumbo, if you wanna skip to the meat and potatoes, go ahead and fast forward to this number right here. So anyways, I'm in my garage right now because it's quiet and I can be as loud as I want. When we moved here, I was so scared that my Tahoe was not gonna be able to fit in this garage. But look, look at this. So my Tahoe's lifted a little bit by like, you know, two, three inches, nothing fancy. But there's just a few inches between the pipes and the top of my Tahoe. Anyways, guys, I'm here to talk to you about which brakes you should choose. I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately and I've never really covered the topic. So I wanna do that today for you and I'm gonna offer you some crucial information. Again, if you're new here, uh, my name is Austin Alexander. I've been active in the Navy for the previous five years of my life and I love it. Um, there's been some parts that I, you know, haven't loved, but overall, you know, Navy is part of my heart and I love it. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. I think one thing that people neglect is the hamstring. So a lot of people will do squats. You know, squats are a very popular leg workout, but I definitely recommend working your hamstrings, doing some accessory work with your hamstrings, things like that. That's what really helped my hamstrings to grow a whole lot. I used to just squat heavy and my hamstrings were tiny. So one thing I recommend is work your hamstrings. So you can see right here, I'm doing a cable lat pullover and then I'm super setting with a cable lat pull down. I like this because it really burns out the lats, gives me a really good pump and I can really put squeeze, put that tension in the back of the lats. All right, just left, just left the gym. It's, uh, let me check my watch, 11.41. So now this is the time I usually eat, take a shower, and I put my uniform on. So, ready? Ah. Well, that was cool, right? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. People ask about my tats all the time. I'll show you this one really quick. This is a Viking, and no, I'm not a Vikings fan. Okay, I was at a tattoo shop, and one of my friends was getting tatted, and he was like, oh, I forgot my wallet. Let me run to get my wallet, and while he was running to get his wallet, I was listening to this song called Vikings on my little iPod. This was in Bahrain. And I was like, yo, I was like, can you tat this Viking head on me? He's like, yeah, where do you want it? And I was like, oh, let's put it on my trap. So it was like literally spur of the second, like tat this on me right now. Do I regret it? Nah, it's probably one of my favorite ones. This one, this is my mistletoe. Got it in Bahrain. Probably uh, my second favorite one. Ten ounce chicken, 140 grams rice. Ten ounce chicken, 140 grams rice. Ah, you thought I was gonna go to work without shaving, didn't you? Not today. Could have slept here for days. I felt your heart beat, felt your mouth real. But it's not real. We were close to see the sun, but clouds got in our way. And so. Alright, y'all, I'm finally on the way to work. If you made it this far, congrats. This is a meat and potatoes. If you're just joining us from earlier, hello again. So there are three key points that I want to cover when it's time to pick your branch. Okay. And I don't blame you for for wondering this. This is a you know very important question because you're deciding what you want to do next four to six years. Very big decision. So I don't blame you and nobody else should for wondering. So number one is your job selection. So there's a huge variety a wide very very wide variety of jobs in the military you can do anything from infantry to you know working on airframes so the first thing i recommend is do your due diligence and be sure that you're going into a job that interests you okay you don't want to be stuck uh sitting at a desk if you like hands-on stuff you don't want to pick a desk job or if you like 
desk jobs, you don't want to be constantly you know, doing manual labor. It's all about the job selection, and I believe this is the most important thing that's going to help you get the most out of your military career, and it's going to help you thrive more in the military. So I recommend organizing your hobbies and your interests with a job in the military. Here's another tip for job selection. Don't go into a recruiter's office and be like, hey, what job should I pick? I like being a mechanic. They're gonna recommend you anything, okay? This is just the truth, and I know you recruiters out there that are watching this, you know I'm halfway right, okay? Most of you are gonna agree with me because you're a recruiter, and Lord knows, I may end up as a recruiter someday too, but, you know, the recruiter is not the person that you wanna ask. Now, I agree, some of them are honest. My recruiter was completely honest with me, so don't think I'm bashing recruiters. Number two is duty stations, okay? If you like being next to the water, there's no reason why you would choose army. Or if you like being in a field somewhere, or if you like being, you know, maybe in a secluded place, then you wouldn't choose navy, okay? So my tip for you for duty stations is to research where the duty stations are, okay? Let's say if you're from Oklahoma and you wanna stay in Oklahoma, you might wanna consider the Air Force because Tinker Air Force Base. Or if you're from San Diego, you may wanna consider the Navy to stay next to San Diego. So consider the duty stations. I'm not telling you to join you know, join the Navy or join the Army. I'm just saying consider your options, guys. It's, it's a no-brainer, consider your options. A tip for this is to Google, you know, where are the duty stations at? Where are the Air Force bases? Where are the Navy bases? And it will give you locations of all the military bases. Number three, is very important i think i chose this one because it's important to me is the travel okay how long are you staying in one place at a time i know with the air force i was talking to a friend the other day and they can stay anywhere for up to six years but the navy i know we have a seashore rotation so we rotate every two to five years and we even have one year billets i know people they just hit up one year hit up one year and then they go to like five or six places in the span of five or six years. So consider your rotations. If you wanna get stuck somewhere, if you wanna be stationary, then you might wanna consider a branch that's stationary. If you wanna travel a lot, if you wanna do a lot of things, then consider a branch that travels a lot. And again, you can Google this, you can say, what is the rotation of Air Force? Or what is the rotation of Marines on Google? You know, Google will tell you everything. I don't have time to go over every single branch's rotations. I'm just saying, rotation is something that you definitely wanna consider. So to summarize everything up, these three things you definitely wanna consider before choosing your military branch. One, job selection. What jobs are in each branch and which one interests you? Two, duty stations. Where are you most likely to get stationed and where would you like to go? Number three, rotation. If you wanna travel a lot, then you might wanna consider a branch that rotates a lot. Anyways guys, so I hope this helped a lot. If you made it this far and you're not subscribed yet, then I would really like if you hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I will see y'all in the next video.